Hey guys, it's Jen. And Ben. And it's time for another episode of Ask Jen. And Ben. Today's topic is on... Parenting. Parenting. And parenting styles, techniques. Conflicts. And how we navigate all that. Mm -hmm. Alrighty, let's hop into it. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> what were the major differences in your expectations of parenting versus reality? I didn't really have expectations that it would be easy. I knew it would be life altering, mm -hmm. but I think maybe it was more life altering than I expected. But I don't, I don't know. I feel like in my mind, I'm a lot more confident than I come out to be, especially with Arya, and that I have this idea of being the strong person that's like, no, Arya, don't jump off the couch. But then in reality, I'm like, Arya, please. <laughs> please listen to dad. <laughs> how are you guys parented and how did that influence your parenting style? My parents were pretty easygoing, but we had a lot of unspoken rules. I feel like my sister and I were very mm. obedient in mm. general. They weren't like, oh, if you don't get home by 7 p.m., you're gonna get punished. It was never like that. Like we would have a time that we had to be back at home for dinner after playing. And if it was like within five or 10 minutes, it was no big deal. So I grew up in a family of six. So there's a lot of kids. And I feel like, especially with my friends, when I would see their parents, I felt like my parents were a lot more relaxed with rules. So there weren't a lot of groundings. There weren't a lot of like crazy curfew times. We weren't the kids that when we went over, we had a list of like pre-approved movies we could watch, mm. like some of our friends. Oh yeah, I but... definitely had friends growing up that were like, oh, you're not allowed to watch Captain Planet. Yeah, my, my parents were like, just make sure they come back. <laughs> 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 I don't think that that's necessarily my parenting style because naturally like our personality is mixed into it as well. But I think it made me a lot more relaxed with how I saw parenting and that it doesn't have to be this like super uptight by the book kind of mentality. Do you and Ben have similar parenting styles? And if not, how do you come to decide which way is best to approach something? Our parenting styles are actually pretty similar mm -hmm. in that for the most part we agree on a lot of things in terms of how to feed her, how to take care of her during the day, how to split up chores, how to split up watch time. I'm a really research heavy kind of parent. I read books about parenting and I read other people's opinions and advice and I try to just absorb as much as I can and then based on that information I try to come to the best conclusion that I find in my own parenting choices. In college, my emphasis was in psychology and I especially studied a lot of child psychology. So I'll bring a lot of these discussions up with Ben and then we talk about it together. It's good to just make decisions beforehand because by the time you're already in a crisis situation, you're just gonna wanna do what's easy versus what's best long-term. Mm -hmm. How do your different cultural upbringings affect how you parent? Do you see yourself using certain tricks, techniques your mom used that are strange to Ben and vice versa? For the most part, I feel like when I ask my parents, like, how did this go for you? Or what did you do? A lot of times my mom is like, I don't remember. <laughs> they really were winging it a lot more than we get to with all the advice on the internet. They just made it work. Which your mom does a thing where she'll take Arya, especially when Arya was like a little baby and she pats her and goes, ja -jang, ja -jang. Ja -jang. And <laughs> So that, Arya would fall asleep sometime on your mom. Yeah. But we never did that. So like that was one thing that was obviously different from like how your mom probably raised you guys versus us. But I think that in the long term, it really isn't that big of a deal because we're the parents. We do get to have her sleep our way almost all the right. time. And now Arya just, it's like a play thing for her. She'll just lay back and then pat herself on the chest and go, da dang, da dang, da dang. Which it sounds more like that. Da 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 da. <laughs> Or if Ben's laying down and tired, then she'll go over and pat him on the chest and go da 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 da. Or she even does it with her <laughs> doll. Oh yeah, she'll Affect put her doll to affectionately bed. Affectionately named Baby. <laughs> it's such a cute thing. Yeah. Do you have any help like in-laws, nanny, etc.? For the most part, we haven't had much help because Ben's parents and my parents were both in Kansas, but more recently, just in like the last four months, my parents 
parents actually moved out here, mm -hmm. which has been amazing mm -hmm. during my pregnancy for them to be around and have good home cooking. <laughs> yeah. Just in general, we have really, really close relationships with both sets of in-laws and mm -hmm. they've helped us a lot when we've needed it. So as of right now, Arya is still at home. We don't have a nanny. But I feel like you and I are both maybe eager to have her maybe go in a daycare part-time mm -hmm. or hire some sort of nanny. We just haven't, right. we haven't done that yet. It's just yeah. been us. <laughs> it's, it's the next step. How do you balance parenting Arya and also finding time for each other? I think the big thing is understanding when we have time. That's either nap time, bedtime, or sometimes Arya will actually just like to go and play by herself. And so she'll go and she'll color on a book or she'll play with her toys. She likes to put a lot of things in a stroller and push it around just for a long period of time. Which when she was maybe five or six months and started playing with toys, we would kind of like play with her and then once she was really engrossed in the toy we'd kind of step away if they're really engaged in what they're doing and they mm -hmm. see that you're watching close by but not necessarily hovering over them they just sort of get used to that over time but for the most part it's like if she's down for a nap if she's down for the night that's when we make time for each other that's when we make time to do things that we like that's when we make time for sometimes to go out and i will say it's so much easier to ask somebody to like babysit or just like watch her if she is already in bed asleep for the whole mm -hmm. night if somebody just wants to come over and like watch a movie while the baby is asleep in her own room it's not really like yeah. that difficult mm -hmm. so then if we want to do something special on our own or like go out and walk around we can after 8 p.m. It's usually to go get ice cream. <laughs> what routines do you have with Aria? Mealtime, naps, bedtime, etc. For us, everything is routine mm. as much as possible. Going back to what we talked about before, we're not strict when it comes to what Aria does throughout the day, <laughs> but when it comes to routine, we find that the more strict we are, the more she's comfortable knowing that like, oh, now it's bedtime or now it's nap time or now it's time to eat. So like when we eat, we put her in the high chair, put her bib on, snap the tray down and it's it's go time. And we she eat knows, all together. Yeah. As a family. Nap time, now it's gotten that the routine is so set that now I can say Arya is at night night time and she will go to her bedroom and like lay down on the floor and we have a little sleep sack that we put her in and she'll, she'll like, lay on it. Yeah. <laughs> it makes Arya so happy like she knows mm. a nap is coming and it's just always been that way and closing the blinds, turn on the white noise she has her sleep sack, we give her her lovey, she goes in the crib we say night night to her and we give popo, which is kiss in Korean, and then she will fall asleep within five minutes. I would say that that it's works. not that we're we're perfect at parenting, not mm. in any means. It's just that we found, oh, she's responding to this really well. Let's keep yeah. doing this and let's be really strict about it. Yeah. Does Arya sleep through the night? And if so, at what age and how did you get her to sleep? Lots of research. She was in our room with us, like her crib was next to our bed until about four and a half months. I remember originally my goal was six months to move her into her own room, but it got to be too taxing on me physically because any noise she would make and I would just wake up and mm. I was starting to get nosebleeds from getting so little rest and it was just it was a really crazy time for us I mean I had a hard recovery if you haven't seen that video I'll link it up here but at four and a half months as soon as we moved her into her room and not kidding you the first night we put her in her own room she slept for eight hours and you and I both we cried we had not gotten that kind of sleep since before she was born it was it was magical <laughs> i think we cried for different reasons though i was sad because her moving out of the room was like little baby is growing up oh. really fast you cried because you're like sleep <laughs> So here is how our sleep training worked. We started by moving her to her own crib at four and a half months. She went through the whole like sleep regression thing. So that got a little bit crazy, but then we decided we wanted to do a little bit of soft sleep training. And by that, I meant having the really regimented, very strict bedtime routine. Usually she would wake up at like three in the morning. So I would go in there at three, feed her, and then she would sleep until morning. After like one or two months, I discovered something called the dream 
feed, which instead of going in at three in the morning, I would sneak in there at 10 or 11. Her first sleep cycle lasts about four hours, so I would cut that a little bit short. I would go in there, feed her at like 11 p.m., and magically, her long sleep cycle happened after that point, and she would sleep until like six or seven in the morning, and it's like, I would probably sleep at around midnight, and then she would wake up at 6 a.m. Like, totally functional, doable sleep schedule <laughs> as an adult. So I think I ended up cutting out that last dream feed, maybe when she was like six months old. And then ever since that point, she would basically sleep for 12 hours. But... I mean, there, there were some rough patches yes. here and there. So a huge bit of advice with baby sleeping, we do the five minute rule. If they make a noise or cry or even act psycho, if you just wait five minutes and try to assess in that time what just happened, what they need, why they might have cried, there are so many things that are resolved within that five minutes mm -hmm. that a lot of times will help you from getting too trigger happy and just like jumping the gun. 90% of the time, it's literally nothing. How or in what ways do you currently slash plan to bond through spending quality time with Aria and baby number two? We've already started in getting Aria a baby doll. By doing that, we're trying to get her familiar with the idea of the baby boy coming and just how to treat the baby and how to like care for him. I would also say dinner time, meal mm -hmm. time, having that all together, having that sit down period of time where we are talking with each other, you know, if the grandparents come over then we're all having that communal time and then also our routines you know we have bath time every single night and I know babies don't need to be bathed every night it's just something that we felt was really helpful in establishing a really specific bedtime routine you know hopefully both kids will bathe together and that'll be a time that they can like play and grow together as well mm -hmm. we also do stuff like park time and walks and stuff like that if you guys have advice on how to ease a second child into a family dynamic and keep the first child also like busy and caring for the baby and not getting overly jealous let me know that down in the comments because mm -hmm. we would love to read all of your second time parent advice we're not there yet and we would love to learn from you how is your relationship with fur baby oreo now that you have aria and a second baby on the way oreo is doing okay I know that the instinct is to think that he's getting more ignored because we're focusing more on Arya, but Arya focuses a lot of her attention on Oreo. Basically and... more than us. Yeah. <laughs> if Arya came into this room right now, the first person she would say hi to... Is Oreo. The first person that she would feed something to... Oreo. Oreo. Mm -hmm. The first person that she would want to, like, Call hug. for... Yeah, Oreo. She recently, in the last couple of weeks, learned to say his name Oreo, and she says it nonstop. <laughs> so if I give her some milk and she spills it, she'll go Oreo, 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 Oreo. <laughs> It's funny because he used to really hate toddlers before yeah. we had our own, yeah. but he was so, so good when we had Aria. Mm -hmm. Really protective, would sleep next to her bed and like lay down next to her crib. And if she woke up crying, he would like come and tell us and be like, hey, hey, she woke up. <laughs> yeah, he knows English really well. Yes. <laughs> How do you plan to discipline your children and how would you respond to family members telling you that spanking is the way to go? In college, in some of my courses with child psychology, we actually studied about the effects of spanking and Ben and I both came to a conclusion like before we were even married that we would not spank. That's just our personal choice. It's interesting because we both were raised not with a lot of spanking, but we were both spanked. We turned out okay, but at the same time after reading about those studies and making my own decisions about it, I think that we came to the conclusion that we can parent without spanking mm -hmm. because mentally it's just healthier in the long run. As far as our in-laws go... I don't think they've even gone along the lines of suggesting it to us. We're, we're in a fortunate position where both of our parents are pretty respective of our parenting style. But it's something, again, we were very open and had a discussion preemptively, and it's never been an issue yet. <laughs> Is there anything you guys would not do again with the new baby? Worry as much. Yes! 
one of the best bits of advice we ever got from a parent friend of ours is don't be too precious. Don't feel like every little thing you have to watch like a hawk over. You don't have to sanitize every single little pacifier. You don't have to just like pad every single corner. You should baby proof, but then give them freedom within an area to just be independent, explore, be confident. And I think that that really affected our parenting styles a mm. lot. Just for first time parents, especially, there's, you know, a lot of the stuff you can find online, a lot of the threads you can go down into. There's stuff that can either make you super relaxed or super paranoid about every little thing. And the thing is, there's products out there that people will recommend you to indulge every fear. Mm -hmm. I actually just try to repeat to myself every time she's playing in the dirt or something, every time she like plays in Oreo's water, it's like, you know what? If she's going to get into to gross things once in a while, it's gonna help her immune system. And that's true. Granted, <laughs> we don't just take her and throw her in the dirt and be like, go play Arya, go eat all the things in there. I feel like we treat everything pretty normally. We just try to be relaxed about it. Even if, if we wash our hands or, or use hand sanitizer or disinfect stuff, like our demeanor, we just try to act chill. Mm -hmm. Do you have any overall advice for new parents? Don't be too worried. Don't carry too much. For the most part, babies don't need that much. What, what is the rule? It's like they need to be warm, they need to be fed, they need to be dry. Mm -hmm. If you can handle those three things, you are thriving. <laughs> mm -hmm. It seems like when you look on social media that everyone else is just killing the marathon and you're just struggling to survive the next hour. But guarantee you, every parent feels that struggle. Every parent feels like a failure. Just forgive yourself. Try not to compare and take things one day at a time. And also for all the advice that's out there, nothing really can capture truly like the parents' maternal instincts, mm. paternal instincts. You have to just trust yeah. yourself. No matter what the internet says or what your best friend's mom advice is, at the end of the day, you get to be the parent of that child and you get to make those decisions. So trust yourself, go with your gut, you know, just don't be too hard on yourself if things don't work out like you think it should because it's really hard to control what happens with a child. Lightning round. <laughs> that Jen was pregnant. <laughs> no, we decided before I got <laughs> pregnant. People talk about like, oh, I want to be financially stable. I want to do this and that, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so I wanted to have a house and, and my dog. <laughs> Not yet. Not yet, but it is in the plan. Yes. Have we thought of a boy name? We have. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> So how do you feel about that? Giving I, parenting advice. It's hard because as you have this whole method and lifestyle built around them that when you tell other people and someone's like, yeah, I would never do that with my kid. You're like, oh, you're judging me. <laughs> but in reality, it's just that everybody is so different. There's so many different factors that are gonna weigh in there. You have to learn so much in such a short period of time. It'd be like a four hour long podcast. Oh my gosh, I'd probably listen to it. <laughs> Anyway, I really hope you guys found this helpful and enlightening. And if you guys enjoyed it, or if your parents or have any advice for us or any of that, give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, subscribe to watch more Ask Jen and Bed videos. What were you gonna say? You I was gonna say <laughs> in the comments down below, let us know some parenting advice that you have, yes. just so others can see some different things. Yeah, cause I feel like we can all learn from it. And literally some of the best advice I've gotten, it's just been my good friend saying, hey, cabbage leaves on your boobs. Actually, I didn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> it's just been from my friend's advice and then it, it changes our lives and it makes things so much better. Mm -hmm. We love you guys so much. If you want to contribute more topics and questions to hashtag Ask Jen and Ben, feel free to follow us both on Instagram from head to toe and Benjamin's and uh, our family Instagram is tiptoe. Yeah. We love you guys and we will see you in the next video. Bye. Bye.